Okay guys, since we've been doing some virtualization stuff lately, I thought we'd keep with the trend and this time we'll take a look at Manjaro. So Manjaro is a very popular distro these days. It's easy to use. It looks really good. It's it's just it's a great alternative to something like uh, Mac OS or even Windows, just with how easy and customizable it is. The one thing I will say though is the the process of installing it in VirtualBox is a little bit more tedious than say like Pop OS or Ubuntu or anything like that. There's a lot of installing and rebooting and updating and rebooting and stuff and rebooting and lots of rebooting before we can even get to the point where we can install. Uh, the guest edition CD for VirtualBox. So um, th that part of the video that I, I've already recorded that I'm going to go back over and, and kind of mush between the beginning and the end that I'm recording now, it took me about 40 minutes to uh, to go through it all the way through to make sure I had all of the things in place and installed properly. Um, I will say that I've done this a few times and even the, the 30 to 40 minute range is after doing it a few times and figuring out a few of the kinks. So uh, just know that you're in for a little bit of a ride. It's not Nothing terribly complicated. It's just doing stuff and rebooting and doing stuff and rebooting and doing stuff and rebooting before we finally install that virtual box uh, guest edition CD. So let's go ahead and jump over to my desktop and we'll take a look. Okay, so now that we're over here, let's actually jump over to my desktop and take a look at the Manjaro website. Okay, so this is the Manjaro website. Um, I actually really like it because it's simple, it's to the point. And the thing that we're looking for is right here at the very, very uh, intro of the page where it says try Manjaro. If we come over here, we're presented with some different options. Um, a few different flavors, desktop styles, um, interfaces, whatever you want to call them. Um, I'm a big fan of GNOME, so that's the one that we're going to use here. Uh, if you click on that, then you're taken to a place where you can download that. Um, on the newest version, the 18.04 version, um, you're going to have to download it from the server. There's no peer-to-peer -peer option with that. Uh, if you go back to 18.03, however, there is a peer-to-peer -peer option for that. So just something to keep in mind. So uh, download whichever version, 18.03 or 18.04. Uh, the process will be the same for either of these. Uh, just the download process will be a little different. So uh, let's go ahead and jump over to VirtualBox then. Okay, so here is VirtualBox on my desktop. Um, you can see that I've got uh, a few different uh, Manjaro instances here that I've uh, been testing some things with and kind of putting together this tutorial. So uh, let's go ahead and create a new virtual machine by clicking the new button up here. I'm gonna call this uh, Manjaro, uh, let's call it YouTube. Uh, just for the sake of having something to reference here. Linux, I'm glad that it filled that in, but the, the Mandriva or Mandriva, whatever is wrong. Uh, we'll actually want to base this on Arch Linux. That's how, or that's what uh, Manjaro is built on. So we'll go ahead and click next here. Um, if you've watched my other videos, I like to give four gigs of RAM where it, whenever I can. Um, so now we're just going to go through and create the, the hard disk. Uh, we're going to use the virtual box disk image uh, style. Uh, here we're going to use dynamically allocated just because that way we're not taking up the full amount of hard drive space from the beginning. So if you want to know more about dynamically allocated stuff versus a fixed size, pause the video here, uh, read this, and then let's move on. Here uh, we're going to be presented with uh, the option to uh, decide how much hard drive space we want to give this instance. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give it 50 just because that's 50 gigs. Um, you'll want to give it a minimum of eight, I think, uh, if you can. Anything less than that, you may run into some issues installing. So I always like to go way above and beyond when I can. So we're going to do 50 gigs here. We'll click create. Um, so now the next thing that we need to do is actually go into the settings to change a few little things to, to make sure that we get the best experience out of the gate that we possibly can. So first thing we want to do is come down to system, uh, come over to processor and bump that up. It'll run on one core probably, but I always give it at least two. Uh, I always have better results with two. Give it as many as you feel comfortable without bottlenecking and throttling uh, your host OS. So we want to do that. Uh, next, we want to go to display. I always jack up the video memory to 128. Um, the, the new thing that I've learned here is if you switch the graphics controller from VMS VGA to Xbox or VBox VGA, we'll have a better time installing from the start. Um, that's all we need to do here. So we'll go to storage and we're going to go to the, uh, the controller, the IDE. We should have an empty controller 
or an empty disk here. So what we'll do is we'll come over and we'll select the Manjaro uh, ISO uh, from wherever you uh, have that stored on your computer. Um, audio, nothing to do there. Network, um, by default, it's set to bridge. Um, I, or sorry, it's set to NAT. I like to switch it to bridged. Um, that way it actually pulls an IP address from my router so that I can make it discoverable and accessible on my network. If you leave it at NAT, it'll give you something that won't be as easy to access on your network. So I like to switch it to bridged. Um, using NAT is great if you're doing like malware testing and things like that, but bridged, the bridged adapter is good for, uh, for this kind of a scenario. So. Uh, next thing we'll do is actually just click OK. That's that's all we need to do there. All of the other settings in there are just fine. And we'll go ahead and click Start. Now, this will take a little bit of time and I'm gonna have to drag it up from my bottom screen here. Um, yep, there's that. So let's go ahead and make that full screen. And of course now uh, it'll take us to our boot screen here. Uh, what we want to do is select the boot option um, that's there just a couple of clicks down with your mat or with your with the arrows on your keyboard. Um, we'll go ahead and select that, and then it'll take us into uh, the live version of the OS, and then we'll start that install process. All right, so here we are on our desktop. I'm gonna just tick that so it doesn't start up. Not that it matters, um, because we'll be out of live mode here very shortly. So here's our desktop. Um, basically, all we need to do is come over here to where it says install Manjaro Linux. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. Uh, this is Architect, I guess. What we want to do is install Manjaro Linux. So we're just going to double click that. And then it should start or give us the, the options here that we'll go through as far as installing everything. And a lot of this, they've made it very simple, at least for those of us in the United States, um, whose primary English or primary, primary language is English. It's a lot of just clicking next. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, we're going to tell it to erase the disk and we'll do a no hibernate swap. And uh, that's pretty much it. You can do it a disk encryption if you want, um, but it's another password that you'll have to remember even to get into the spot where you'll log into the operating system. Um, so it's 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 a double layer of security, but um, I'm just not gonna do it for the sake of this video. So once we've got all that selected, we'll just click next. Now it's gonna ask us, what's your name? So I'm just gonna say uh, DB Tech. Um, I'm gonna use that as my username. Computer name is fine. And then of course, oops, dang it. Give it a password. <clears throat> I'm also gonna tell it to log in automatically. Um, not a great security tactic here. Uh, if this is gonna be a shared environment with somebody, definitely don't do this. Also the same thing with um, using the same password for the administrator account. It's a bad idea, but I'm gonna do it anyway. These are both um, big for security. Don't do the things I'm doing here. Um, make sure that you you require a password to log in and that your administrator account has a different password. Um, it's just a matter of security in that regard. So now we'll go ahead and click next saying, hey, this is everything we're gonna do. Yep, are you sure? Yep. And now we just hang out and wait until it's done. Uh, this will just take a few minutes uh, to go through everything and then we'll reboot and we'll do some stuff and we'll reboot, we'll do some more stuff and we'll re reboot again and we'll do some more stuff. Uh, there's a lot of rebooting involved in getting this set up properly uh, for uh, VirtualBox. So uh, we're just gonna let this run and then we'll come back once it's fully installed. Okay, so our install is done and normally we would just click the restart now and done and it would reboot and we'd go right back into our operating system. The problem is that for some reason Manjaro doesn't automatically unmount from VirtualBox. So what we're gonna do is actually come down here and click the start button, click the logout button and then we'll click shut down. We'll give this just a second to do its thing. And then once we get back to here, uh, we'll go into here, we'll click settings uh, we'll go down to storage and then we'll actually just tell it to remove the disk. Click OK and then we'll click start and then that should restart our system um, and then we can get into doing some of the updates and changing the kernel and then uh, after we do all of that uh, then we can actually install the uh, the virtual disk or the virtual box add-on CD. So a few extra steps in this one but I think it'll be worth it when we're done. Okay, so now we are back on our desktop. This time I'm gonna turn this off and we won't see it anymore. Uh, here we're getting an error message. 
um, saying we've got the wrong version of uh, VirtualBox installed, which is not true. I ended updated to uh, to 6.0.8 this morning, so I know it's correct. Um, but we're going to go ahead and skip that message anyway. Um, here in a minute, we'll get an, uh, a little indicator saying we've got some updates to run, and we'll go ahead and do that as soon as that uh, becomes an option for us. So we'll just hang out for just a second here. There we go. We'll click Details. That's the one we're looking for right there. And it's got a pretty substantial amount of updates to do here, uh, almost a full gig to download. So we'll click Apply. It's going to ask for a password. And here you can also see there's a new kernel available. So first thing it's going to do is look for any uh, conflicts. Uh, that's fine. We'll go and click close. And it's saying, hey, we're going to remove some stuff. We're going to add some stuff. And that's all fine. So we'll click commit. And now it's just a matter of waiting until all of this is done. OK, so the first part of the updates are done. Um, Looks like there were uh, some issues detected. Not a big deal there. Uh, we're just going to skip that for now. No big deal. So we're going to close this. And like I said, we're going to reboot again. OK, so we're back on our desktop. And this is where we want to be. The next thing uh, that we want to do is actually upgrade the kernel. I believe right now it's probably running on, on 4.19. something. Uh, we definitely want to be up in the 5 series for this. So uh, what we'll do is, uh, again, we're just going to wait for this for just a minute here. Uh, we should actually get a little icon indicator down in the bottom right-hand corner uh, that tells us that, again, that there's a newer version of the kernel available and that we should upgrade that. Uh, if it takes too long to pop up, uh, we can go in um, through the interface and do it that way as well. Cool. That's what we're looking for is that new kernel is available. Please update. So we'll just right click. We'll go to kernels. Uh, yeah, so this is the 4.19.36-1. This is what's currently running, as you can see here. Uh, what we really want to do is go up to this 509-2. Uh, so we'll click install. Um, uh, it says, are you ready? Are you sure? Yes. Of course, once password, that's good. So we'll go ahead and put that in. And then again, it's going to be a matter of waiting for this to install. And then we're going to reboot again. OK, so all of that was done. That's easy enough, of course. Next thing we got to do is reboot uh, once more. I said there would be a lot of rebooting in this one, and and I really did mean that. So we're going to do that. And um, I think there's only one or two more reboots before we're completely done, finally. OK, so now we're back on our desktop again. Uh, we're going to click Start. Uh, then we're going to come up here, and we're going to open up a terminal. And the, the next few steps will be in the terminal. Pretty easy stuff. Uh, we're going to do a sudo. This is asking for root privileges. We do pacman for package manager. Um, and then um, minus s, y, y. And this is just going to update our uh, repo uh, database. And uh, password. And this, this will just force it to look for anything new. Um, and then once that's done, then we're going to do basically the same thing. Um, but we're going to do um, oops, minus Linux, like so. And then, yeah, we're going to go ahead and let that do its thing. Now you can see that even though we installed that, the um, so even though we, inst sorry, even though we installed the, uh, uh, 5 series kernel. We've still got this 4.19 running. Um, so that's why we're doing these additional updates. Uh, we'll also have to do some, after this is done, we're going to go ahead and um, reboot. And then we're going to load the kernel headers. Um, and then we'll reboot again. And then all of our kernels should be updated. And then at that point, uh, we can then add the uh, virtual box. Um, so then at that point, we can add the virtual box um, guest editions CD and everything should work properly at that point. OK, so all of those updates are done. That's good. So we're going to just do a sudo reboot. OK, so now we're back on our desktop. We're going to come back over to here. We are go back to the terminal. Um, installing the headers we're going to do from the terminal as well. Um, and we're going to do a sudo package manager 
Linux headers, put in our password. Now, here's where you gotta pay attention. Uh, this is actually important. Um, right now, we've got uh, the 419 uh, kernel in, well, this is the kernel that it's loading. What we actually want is this Linux 50. This is the 5.0 or the, 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 the five series uh, headers that we want to install for, uh, for that kernel. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, select number eight um, for that five series for the headers, the 5.0 series, I guess, and press enter. Um, yeah, we want to go ahead and proceed with that, saying that, hey, there's going to be uh, about 9 megs uh, downloaded, but the total install size is going to be closer to 64 megs. I'm fine with that. Uh, so it's going to do this, and uh, then we can reboot one last time uh, before we actually get into installing the Guest Edition CD. Cool. So uh, we'll do a sudo reboot. And that should give us our, our most recent kernel, the proper headers, and give us the ability to install um, that guest edition CD. So all of that has led to this. Cool, so now we're back on our desktop one last time. Well, one more time, I suppose. Uh, the next step, like I said, is going up here to devices and inserting the guest editions CD. Um, now, from past experience, like with Ubuntu and others, uh, by doing that, you get a little pop-up here on the screen that says, hey, this thing that you just inserted has software. Would you like to run it? And Manjaro doesn't do that. So what we'll do is we'll actually come over here to this file systems icon. We'll open that up. And um, then we'll come up here. We'll click on the VBox uh, guest edition. Uh, that's what that GA is. In here, what we actually want to do is run this VBox Linux editions dot run script. So we'll come over and we'll start, we'll just right click in here and go to terminal. And then we're going to say sudo bash uh, VBox L and you hit tab right there. It'll fill everything else in and you can hit enter, hit type in your password. This is saying, hey, are you sure you want to install this? The answer is yes. Um, and then it should go through this install process. <clears throat> now, without doing everything that we've done up to this point, um, it was throwing errors telling us that um, our current setup wasn't set up to uh, like recompile kernels. So we needed to do, do all, the, all this header stuff. And all that header stuff is uh, basically why we had to do all of the kernel updates and the reboots and the updates and the reboots and the updates and the reboots was to make sure that we had the right kernel in place to do um, the installation of the guest editions CD for the maximum compatibility that we can get between um, the operating system and uh, VirtualBox. So I know it's a kind of a long drawn out process to get here. Uh, I've actually been recording for just over 38 minutes um, just from the time we jumped over to my desktop until now has been about 38 minutes. So um, so it's a bit of a process getting Manjaro installed on a virtual box. Uh, if you were to do this, let me do this. If you were to do this on say like a desktop or a laptop, you wouldn't have to necessarily go through all of this headache because you wouldn't have to install the guest edition CD. Um, but you still would want to make sure you've got the most current uh, kernel, all of the updates, that sort of thing. So even though we're doing this for different reasons, you would still want to go through this process, even if you were just doing this on, you know, a laptop or a PC or whatever. So, so that's kind of why we're doing all this is to show both cases of why, uh, both to make sure you're updated, but also to make sure we can install uh, the software that we just did here. So let's jump back over uh, to our desktop where we can see that everything installed without any issues at all. Um, so basically at this point, we can uh, do a sudo reboot again. And then we should be, oops. Um, so yeah, basically at this point, once we reboot, uh, now we're done, we've got all of our updates. It's all set up and ready to go. So now you can start exploring uh, how things will work with Manjaro. So we're gonna go ahead and let this run uh, one last time, get us back on our desktop. We'll connect to the internet uh, just to make sure that everything's working correctly. Um, but then at that point, I'm gonna leave it up to you guys to, uh, to explore Manjaro a little bit. So. Uh, let's get back to our desktop and uh, and and just jump on the internet real quick. Actually, before we jump on the internet, let's actually do this real quick. We're gonna open up the file system and we're just gonna eject that guest edition CD. Uh, we don't need it, so there's no point in having, having it installed there. Um, so let's do this. Um, let's just type in 
uh, Firefox. We're gonna go ahead and run that. Um, and of course, because it's the first time I'm running Firefox, it may take a little longer than normal to pop up. All right, so here we go. Um, the first thing I always do um, is I like to test uh, fast.com just to make sure we've got a good solid internet connection. Looks like we do. Um, <clears throat> there's a little lag there, a little latency, something. Normally I hit closer to 300, but 250 is just fine with me. So I think at that point we're good to go. So uh, let's, let's go back over to my other camera now. Okay, so there you go. There's installing Manjaro on VirtualBox. Again, kind of tedious, not complicated, but definitely I think tedious to make sure that everything is installed properly to get everything to work the most efficiently. So there you go. I think that pretty much wraps up everything for now regarding that. If you guys are interested in this video, we can take a deeper dive into Manjaro if you'd like, but I'm just gonna leave it here for now. So one other thing I wanted to mention before we wrap things up here is that I do have a little website, a little webpage that I built at support.db dbte.ch for you know support db tech uh, that's got some different links where you can do things to help support the channel whether it's uh, clicking my amazon affiliate links uh, buying stuff off my amazon wish list uh, donating via paypal or coffee any of those options you'll find links to all of that um, on that page and i'll link that to that down in the description below um, but I think that's going to wrap everything up. If you've got questions or comments, of course, leave those in the comment section below. Actually, there is one more thing that I needed to start including here is that, um, be sure to read the description before you start blowing up the comment section. Um, the reason I say that is because if people start asking questions, I often will update the description to answer those questions for things that I didn't get into the video. So um, the description is a very, very good place to find answers to questions you may have. Also the comment section, I'm very, very responsive. I talk to a lot of people in the comments and I try to answer as many questions down there as I can. Um, so definitely check out the description and the comment section uh, with any of the questions that you may have. So with that rant out of the way, as always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.